Hey everyone, Cadams Tech here. So in today's video, I want to discuss how to start freelancing as a junior software engineer. But first, if you're new to my channel, my name is Christopher Adams. I am a senior full stack software engineer living in the Tampa area. If you feel like you've gotten any value out of this video, remember to like, subscribe, and share with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. And let's go ahead and get on into it. Okay, so how to get into freelancing as a junior, right? How do you do this? All right, so for me, how I first got into freelancing as a junior was my uncle approached me and he wanted a lawn maintenance site. And at this time, I only knew some basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the front end, enough to make some really ugly looking pages and be able to manipulate them with some JavaScript, right? He threw me for a loop because he wanted a blog, a custom blog. He wanted to create, edit, and delete some blog posts. So I knew I had to create an admin area for him to be able to do this. So that means I need to get into the server side. And at this time I knew HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I knew some Python, but I've never done Python on the web. So I heard about this platform called Node, which will allow you to use JavaScript on the server. So that's why I chose Node for my backend uh, platform to work with it. And at the time I rolled with MongoDB, which was pretty popular at the time. It still is, but I don't hear it as much as I did back in those times, which is around seven years ago. So that's the stack I chose, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, very simple, all wrote from scratch on the front end. And then I use Node and MongoDB on the back end, MongoDB for the database. So this is an alternative to say something like using MySQL or Postgres or something like that, right? So that's what I chose. Um, MongoDB was okay with me at the time because it was kind of like, it was an object. It was like a JavaScript object and you can just pop it in. It was really easy to work with. Um, getting into it versus having to learn SQL, which is another language that I would have to learn SQL and then learning more about databases and database tables and setting up all of that at the time. No, I, I didn't really need that. Right. I chose MongoDB because all I needed to do is the basic operations on, on this. Hey, let's insert this blog post. Let's update it. Let's delete it. That's it. I didn't need tons of tables to do all these different things and relationships and things like that. I took some basic real quick courses. Hey, how do I insert records, update, delete records using MongoDB? How do I set up a simple node server? Things like that, just enough to get me up and running and, and complete the tasks at hand, which was blog posts, right? I think I may have even probably read a few articles and maybe even watched um, tutorial videos specifically dealing with creating custom blog. So I use that as a jumping off point. Hey, I, you know, I need to create a blog for my uncle. Let me go ahead and figure out if there's any tutorials that exists doing this very thing. So I did that, I used it as a good jumping off point. That was that, was that. Um, I got into it and I started plugging away. I had a few different iterations for the front end. I changed the whole page and the stylings and everything probably like two or three times until it was complete. Um, I went through several like facelifts on it. I, I, I built it and then I was like, eh. At first I was like, oh, this is really good, good job. And then like a week later I'll look at it and say, yeah, this looks ugly, I wanna do it over again. And then I would do it over again. And then I did it again, I would, and then I'm like, this looks good, this looks good, and the next week I'm like, eh, I don't like this, I don't do it over again. So then I did it again. And I did this three times. Every single time my uncle said that he liked it, you know, he didn't really have any complaints. Um, I had to gather some assets from him, so I had to communicate and learn the client um, skills, which is like, hey, can you provide me some images, some high quality images for this site? Hey, can you provide me with some verbiage for these different sections of the page? What do you want me to say about crabgrass? What do you want me to say about chinch bugs? What do you want me to say about different services you offer? Uh, do you want me to include a testimonial section? Things like that. So it's gathering assets. It's back and forth with the client through emails, through texts, through phone calls. So it's very important that you document the time spent on all of these little things, because when you're freelancing, you want to charge for all of these little things. So I had a Google Sheets and I'll put the date. I would document everything. I would have the date, the time spent, and what it is I did during that time spent. So each each line, I would say, date, I worked from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. And then next to that, I'll put 0 0.5, which means half of an hour. And next to that, I'll put a description, what exactly I did for that time. Then if I took a break, I'll come back and I'll do the same thing line by line, every single minute, every single minute. So that way, if the client ever questions anything, you can go back to that sheet and you could say, this is what I did on this day and this time, it's meticulous record keeping that will, that will drive you forward. 
the, the client's not going to be able to dispute that. You can pull up the sheet and you can show them exactly what you did. Um, I highly recommend this. You don't have to do this. I highly recommend this. It saved me one time. It saved me a few times. I'll just leave it at that. All right, so I did this with my uncle and I completed the site, right? I completed the app for him. It was launched, got paid for it. He was officially my first client. He approached me because he knew I was learning this stuff and he needed the site, right? Um, it was a success. I learned how to host his site because he didn't know how to do that. So I went to simple hosting um, where you could just basically like just deploy it in a couple clicks. Um, learned how to register domains, he needed to register his domain, um, uh, stuff like that. And you might come into a situation where you need to pay for something. Well, what I would advise to do is maybe use something like 1Password uh, or, or some other um, LastPass and read, like create the login for them. So let the client know in advance that you're gonna create some logins for them for their hosting. So maybe use their email address and create your own password for it. Do everything you need to do. And then give them their email address password, their temporary password that you created for it. And then the link to where you need them to go connect their credit card to. So say if you're doing Heroku or GoDaddy or something like that, create the username with their, with their email address, create a temporary password that you can give them, link it through 1Password so it's secure, send it to them, say, hey, can you attach your credit card to this? They'll attach their credit card to this. You do what you have to do. And then when the project's done, tell them, say, hey, change the password on this to whatever you want, right? Because that way you're, you're, they feel safe. You don't have any reason to be in there until the next time you do something for them. Okay, that was that. So the, the moral of that story is to try and find a friend or family member that you know is interested in the applications and try and build something for them and keep it very, very small, right? Keep it very, very small so that way you can learn how to actually do this stuff. And then your confidence and your skills will grow from there. Do this and you're gonna be good. And I think when it comes to the friend or family member thing, almost everyone I know has several app ideas. They, they all want some type of app. So I don't think you're gonna have too much trouble finding someone to build something for, right? Your first few, maybe your first two or three, charge really, really cheaply. Just get the skills, get the experience. This is really what you're after. And then after that, every single time you get a new client from then on out, just keep charging more and more and more. Just keep charging, keep charging more. Get that, get that dollar amount up there, right? Don't lowball yourself, but don't go too crazy either. All right, so if you can't find anyone that's a friend or family member that you know would like an application for a really affordable price, then start approaching small businesses in your area. I did this, I've done this one time, and the one time out of one time I've done it, I landed that gig, right? So I'll tell you a story. So there was a pizza shop right across the street from where I was working as a junior software engineer. And literally on my lunch break, I was thinking about it while I was at my desk. I was like, you know what? I, I could use some extra side cash. And I was doing a little research. I went to their website on the computer and I was like, this site looks pretty ugly. I, I know I can do a better job, right? So start scouting out some potential. Start looking up some web pages, web apps for businesses in your area. And if you see any that you think are severely outdated and that you think you could confidently do a better job on, then start approaching them. Look at what their site looks like. And what I did was I actually walked into the, the pizza shop. I ordered a slice of pizza. And then right as they're handing it to me, I said these very words. I said, yeah, I looked at your web page and it looks like it could use some work. Uh, I'd be happy to do it for you. And that very day I received a yes. Yes, we could, we could actually, I was just going to reach out to uh, someone to try and help me with that. But I'm glad you came in. And bam, the ball rolled from there. The ball rolled from there. It was the same process as uh, my uncle. A lot of the same stuff. There's going to be some phone calls. There's going to be some emails. There's going to be some in-person meetings where I'll bring my laptop and I'll show them in person. Hey, look, this is what I built for you so far. What do you think? Um... Things like that. So when I initially start the project, I like to look at some potential ideas. I like to look at some other pizza shops. I like to see what their pages look like. And if I see anything that catches my eye and that I think I could confidently build, I will show my client, say, what do you think about this type of look? 
We can make it your own. We can make your colors your own. We can make the theme your own. We can do everything your own. But what do you think about this as a general jumping off point? And they'll say yay or nay. And then you just go on to the next one. Hey, what do you think about this one? Until you get a yes. More times than not, I think you'll get a yes. Um, a lot of these people are not designers. They're not trained designers. So they'll probably trust you uh, inherently. But um, that's what you want to do. Um, you could also do things like themes. There's some themes. And I like to personally do the raw, like, HTML, CSS, JavaScript themes where it's just all raw code. It's not getting into anything crazy um, that's complex. Because the reason I like doing the raw type of theme where it's, like, HTML, CSS, um, and JavaScript is because I feel comfortable with going in and manipulating the code and changing anything the way I want it to without it being too over the top. Like, if you use WordPress or if you use Wix or something like that, there's a lot more to it. It's a lot, it's not as bare bones. There's a lot going on and there's nothing at all wrong with that. Tons of people do that. But for me personally, just from my own perspective, I've, I've always written code from scratch. So I kind of wanted to stay away from that. Um, but there's a lot of good in that too. So look, look into that on your own. There's a lot of good jumping off points. Like for my blog situation, if I knew to use that at the time, I could have cut out so much code, uh, handwritten code, right? because they have built-in blog themes already there. But I chose to build it from scratch. Things like that that you can leverage, but you don't need to. I felt more comfortable building from scratch. What I did for the pizza shop route is I looked up HTML, CSS, JavaScript themes, and I used a theme that was pre-built, had like the pizza stuff, had the menu area, everything was there. And then I basically gutted a lot of it to make it my own and to tweak it to the client's needs, right? So the skeleton was there and a lot of the main parts were there, the menu, the navigation menu, everything was there, but I had to swap out images. I had to change some text. I had to remove certain segments of the page that we weren't gonna use. I had to add some of my own custom segments to the page, right? And this is what made the process quicker, right? And I got it done in a really reasonable amount of time um, and made quite a, quite a bit of money from that. So I'm happy about that. But that aside, there's other things that I should mention, right? Communication, communication, communication. This is the biggest thing. Don't leave your client in the dark for too long. Try and touch base with them every few days, at the very least. Don't nag them to death. Don't message them every two seconds. You need to balance. You need to come up with all of your list of questions and say, hey, can, you, can we uh, have like a quick 10 minute meeting or 30 minute meeting, right? And hash these questions out. Hash these questions out. And then go, on, go back do some work, come up with another list of questions. Hey, can we meet and talk about these and hash these out? And so on and so forth. And when I say touch base with clients, I don't mean have a meeting every, every few days. I mean, just let them know what's going on. Hey, I'm still plugging away on your site. Just wanted to let you know things are going well. Simple as that. Leave it at that statement, right? They'll be happy with that. Okay, that, I mentioned this, document every single minute spent on every single thing because you're gonna be charging for these things. Another thing is preferably don't bid for the entire job itself. You can get yourself into trouble with this, especially when first starting out. I like to say, I honestly, I'm going to try and get it done in the most reasonable amount of time that I can. Um, but, you know, charge hourly. Try and charge hourly. Say, so I, I, I'm going to work by the hour, but I feel like I can get this done in within a reasonable cost. And if I feel like it's getting anything crazy, I'll let you know in advance, right? Because the reason I don't like charging for the entire job is usually I find that projects will take two to three times as long as you think it will. So if you are going to guesstimate and say, hey, I'll, I'll bid for this entire project, you might wanna charge around two to three times, probably more towards the side of three times, how long you think it will take you. If you think it's gonna take you 10 hours, say 30 hours. If you think it's gonna take you 100 hours, say 300 hours. Because you don't want to end up coming up short and selling yourself short. This contract, you're in control. You're the one freelancing. Create a contract, like a one page contract. There's a lot of sample contracts out there. Maybe I'll make a video on how to create a contract and which contract I came up with. But in the contract, you should have something like this. Any revisions that are required post-launch will be 
a charge or any revisions after post charge, I'll give you two revisions for free, two minor revisions. Uh, you, there's, you gotta play around with that. Um, I don't like to do any work for free. So I wouldn't put like, I'm gonna do two revisions for free. I'm not even gonna do that. I would, I would just say any revisions afterwards are going to cost money or things like that, right? Another thing I put in the contract is, in the way I like getting paid, it's called a 33% split, right? And this one, this one is a real money maker, so pay attention. Oftentimes, towards the tail end of the project, some clients will just dip out or they'll say, eh, forget about it. That last third completion of the project always seems to take the longest, right? So this is why I like doing this 33% split. Before you start any work at all on this project, right, just as you're starting, but before you write any code, tell, this will be the contract and you want to discuss this in person with them too. Say, I would like 33% of what I'm gonna get paid up front. This is more along the lines of if you're charging by the full project. Hey, this whole project is gonna be $6,000. I'm going to need $2,000 up front. And it's more like a good faith type of thing, right? I'm going to need $2,000 up front. They give you $2,000. You haven't written any code yet. Now you start writing the code. Now you start building stuff. And try and get a first iteration of what they want quick. Right? And have that in your contract too. Say, on first iteration, I would like another 33%. So you get 33% of the money up front, $2,000. You hammer out a prototype or what the general page will look like. You show it to them. They're happy with it. You collect another 33%. So now you have 66% of the money before you even complete the project. So now you have an upper hand. And then go on and finish the whole project. Finish up the remainder of the project. And then you'll get that final 34%. Um, and then you'll be in a good position. You'll be in a good position. Yeah, now if you're doing hourly, you're gonna have to feel this out with the client. There's, there's no one size fits all. Some clients feel comfortable paying you after, hey, every 40 hours you work, I'll give you some money. Um, others, you may have to build the entire project before you actually get any of the money. Um, so it's a little trickier. This is something that is up to you as an individual, what you would like to do, and something that you will have to negotiate with the client. Try not to go too long before collecting a payment is my advice. Um, there are some bad clients out there. There's some people that I've heard that don't pay, don't pay, you know? So you need to make sure that you get a real feel for the client as a person. Are they genuine? Do they look like they're gonna pay me? Do they sound like they're gonna pay me? Things like that. Um, just be careful there, just be careful. Yeah, so that aside, I think that is a good high level for how to do things. I mean, honestly, you're going to have to get in there and get a real feel for it, which is why working for a friend or family member or maybe, you know, something like that, maybe a friend of a friend um, would be a good approach when just starting out so you can iron out some of these little uh, details and then gain your confidence so that way you can approach your next client and charge a little more money and get your next client after that and charge a little more money until you're making over $100 an hour, right? You want to get at the point where you can make over $100 an hour. Also, another thing, when you're freelancing, you're going to have to pay taxes. You're going to have to pay quite a bit in taxes. So one big piece of advice is just take away 33% of the overall earnings that you get for anything freelance and put it in its own separate account, right? Um, I use a CAP 360 account and a CAP Online 360 savings account, so you get some interest from it too. Um, and I have a, an exact, like an account just for contract work or just for freelance work. Right. And I put all of the earnings for, for, I take 33% out and I put it all in there and I don't even think about it. Right. Because the tax man will come knocking boy. And when they do, you want to make sure you have that money set aside. So don't get yourself into trouble. So I hope you all have gained something from this video. If you have any questions at all, please post them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Every single question that has been posted onto my YouTube channel, I've responded to so far, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. If you feel like you've gained anything from this video, remember to like and subscribe, share it with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. I have a ton more content coming out soon, and see you all later.